Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. I uh, you know, I do uh, been doing this for a while, and I uh, understand that there can be challenges on days like this. I want everybody to get a chance to have their expression. But as it happens, the hour lengthens, and you want people to hear the word from the speaker that you have. So you got to kind of weigh the two. To me, I'll do whatever, whenever, so it doesn't matter to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I'm coming from Flint, Flint, and I bring you greetings uh, from Flint Family Worship Center Church where I'm the senior pastor. This is my 23rd year there. Right. And I also uh, bring greetings from my lovely wife, Tanya C. Stokes, who's not with us. She's in the third week of a fast. Amen. And I was fasting with her. Uh, I did not go three weeks. I did my time. And I came off. Uh, but uh, it's good to fast, but it does take a lot out of me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I want to offer my apologies to uh, the men of cloth, clerk, and women of cloth. If, I'm, if my dress is at all offensive, yeah. uh, I uh, have had quite a week and weekend. And I uh, preached harder than I thought I would this morning. And I just did not have the strength to put on a suit and tie. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I fell out and I walked off. They brought me something to eat. They almost fed me. And, uh, I said, I'm just going to make it to Lansing. Now, some of you might not know uh, that uh, Lansing is my home. Born and raised here. So, um, I'm visiting home. Amen. And I thank God for all the clergy here. Some I know, uh, some I know by name, elderly, some I know by face. The gentlemen are very familiar to me. And I just appreciate all of the men and women who give themselves to the gospel. It's no small thing, it's an honorable thing. Amen. Uh, the longer I'm in it, the more I appreciate those who give themselves to it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I know I, I seem to be taking my time because one thing, probably the greatest weakness in my ministry is this part, the preliminary. Always to get something, to get people, to get to honor something, you know, I mean, the church mouth something, I don't know. But I thank God that my mother is here. God created to give your shoes on. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Your neighbor will be a witness. Yeah. I'm telling the truth already. Yeah. Listen, I know I know preachers say this all the time, and a lot of times they don't tell the truth. But really, I'm not going to be before you long. Really, I'm not. For real. For real. For real, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, but um, I, I do have something that I want to share with you um, uh, from the theme. It's interesting that we're in the book of Galatians. I just took a class, uh, the, the fourth class in a session of Greek classes, Greek exegesis, where uh, we went through the book of Galatians, right. interesting enough. Uh, and uh, so I, I find myself so familiar with what's happening in the particular text that was chosen uh, for uh, your uh, theme here, preaching with purpose, uh, and interesting enough, Paul finds himself having to write to this church in Galatia, uh, because after he came through and was used of God mightily in that area, and there were miracles and conversion um, of both Jews and Gentiles, um, there was some that came behind him who made it their business to attempt to discredit his message and his ministry. Are you with me? So Paul finds himself having to authenticate and justify his message and his ministry. It's unfortunate that in an attempt to make themselves look good, there were those who found it necessary to try to make Paul look bad. Right. You have to be cautious of folks who, in an attempt to exalt themselves, they demean others. Amen? And that's what they were doing. So, even though it was not necessary on one hand, the occasion of the writing finds it necessary for Paul to defend himself. And we see here in the 10th verse, it says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant or a servant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man or of man. It's ek in the Greek, I believe, meaning it doesn't come out from man. Man is not the origin. No. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through dia in the Greek, which is a preposition of instrumentality of me or means, which says the means by which I got the gospel was not man through teaching or through receiving it, but through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I would like to add to that the 15th verse, which is really the culmination of this, the 15th verse and the 16th verse, which says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through His grace to reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him amongst the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes, and I really I mean talk to you for a few minutes from the subject of serving at the pleasure of the king. Serving at the pleasure of the king. When you really look at these particular verses in the Greek, you'll discover that Paul is using a play on words. And this play on words has to do with the term to please. Or seeking to please or to bring pleasure. And he says, look, am I trying to please men or persuade men? That when he talks about that, that pitho in the, in the Greek, when he talks about am I seeking to, uh, uh, to please men or to persuade men, He's really saying, am I going after the favor of man or of God? And here he's defending his 
message, in my preaching, am I preaching in a way that's going to bring favor with man or with God? And there are some interesting things raised in this particular text that I think are significant or relevant for us preachers today. All right. I really have a word for those who bring the word. Is that all right? God has called me to be a preacher of preachers. For 20 something years I've been training preachers and God's been using me to raise up preachers and he's taught me some things. And a lot of these things are contained in this particular text. He says, if I please men, if I'm still out there trying to please men, then I'm not a slave of God. Now it says servant, but the Greek word there is doulos. Which just means slave. One who has a master. He says, look, I'm not trying to please men. I am operating in total dependence and dedication to Christ. My focus is on pleasing my new master. Are you with me? There's a dilemma here, though. Because he's not preaching to Jesus. He's preaching to people. And this is a dilemma that all of us who preach the gospel deal with. I mean, we see people who are preaching and folk are flocking to them. And we wonder, what is it that they have? And when you preach, you want people to be blessed. And you tell yourself that if people are blessed, they'll come. They'll give. So you don't have to pay the bills yourself. See, where I'm at, they have to come and give. I can't pay the bills myself. We had a $7,000 utility bill a couple months ago. I'm not trying to pay that. situation. He might deliver you in your 
Because God is more concerned about the condition of your soul than he is your comfort. study if we do 
it may tickle someone's intellect. We preach what God has revealed in us. What he's saying here is that God took his truth and put it on the inside of me and transformed my life. He changed my life. I am not the same person I was before God chose to reveal his son in me. Hallelujah. And so I preach out of that place of transformation. When we preach, and I'm not telling you what I heard, from a place of transformation, it transforms lives. There is enough preaching going on that does nothing more than itches people's ears. There's enough preaching going on that entertains, glory to God, and, and gets an amen from somebody who has no intention on doing anything that's being said. He said, look, let me tell you something. He said, God had his hand on me in the womb. He chose me in the womb. He, and listen, he chose me by his grace. Glory to God. It had nothing to do with me. I wasn't even born when he chose me. I had done no right or no wrong. I am the elect of God. Therefore, hallelujah, I serve at the master's pleasure. It's not about pleasing this one. Or it's not about pleasing that one. It's about the fact that when God was ready and when he was pleased, he came and he transformed my life. Right. If your life has not been transformed, then you have no basis for ministry. All right. All right. Can I be honest with you? I turn on the radio and I get discouraged because I hear people preaching, but I don't hear any power. Sometimes I look at the television and I turn it off because I hear people preaching, but I don't hear any power. Right. Hallelujah. There's only one way to know that there's power behind the preaching. And that is what you are preaching has changed your life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I hear preachers saying, don't do as I do, do as I say. Glory to God. Everything in this book is right. Glory to God. But when it's for God to change somebody's life, he takes somebody and he takes the word and goes inside of them and begins to rearrange them, glory to God. How can you tell somebody how to overcome something that you're still bound by? That's good. Tired of it. You see, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not in this thing. I'm not in the boat or the dock club and the old boy club and all those different kind of clubs, glory to God. I'm in this thing because I realized that God, just like Paul, he chose me even before I was born. My mother named me Timothy, which is a Greek compound word, Timos Theos is what it is. Timos means to worship or to honor. Theos is the Greek word for God. My very name means to worship God. Yes. And I tried to run from that with all my might. <laughs> the early days of my life. But when I was 20 years old, it pleased God yes. to reveal his son in me. And I've been in church my whole life. Yes. Hallelujah. But didn't have the revelation. But God came and he transformed me. Yes. He did something on the inside of me. And you know what? He did it by his grace. Yes. Which means it, it, it really isn't, it really isn't about me. It's about him. Yes. He chose me before I was born. Wow. 
Know why he chose me before I was born? See, God chose me outside of time before I ever did one thing good or bad. Because he's God. And it was established before time, before I did anything good or bad. So that what he did with my life would not be based on anything I did, good or bad. It would be based on his grace. And I'm forever grateful to a God who chose me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who delivered me from myself because we are our worst enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And because he chose me and because he delivered me, I have something to preach. And here's what I've come to understand. That if what I preach pleases God, he'll bless the people. Oh, yeah. That when my focus is to bless the people I'm on my own. I'm going to have to use my gift. I'm going to have to use whatever tricks I can pull out, whatever rabbit I can pull out my hat, glory to God, to try to excite people and get them stirred up if my aim is folks. But if I ever, as a slave of God, submit myself to him and yield myself to him and let him speak to my heart and deal with me and change me, glory to God, and out of that place of transformation begin to share with others from a place of authority. You see, here's the problem I had. I have a problem with folks who have the same issues 20 and 30 years down the road. It seems like if you have the Holy Spirit and God is with you, glory to God, you ought to go from glory to glory. It's by the Spirit of the living God. And us preachers are not exempt. Why are preachers getting the divorce at the same rate as folks in the world, glory to God? No, we're preaching the gospel, but yet there's parts of us that are going unchanged. If this gospel is powerful enough for us to preach, it's powerful enough to change our lives, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's easy to get a sermon. Once you figure out how to do this thing, it's easy to go on the book and put something together that's going to excite people. What's not easy is when God shows you yourself and your shortcomings. You go to God for yourself and not just ignoring it because you've got a preacher. The first sermon you've got to get is the one he's preaching to you, telling you it's time for you to go higher. And if you don't go higher, you will hold the people down. Y'all don't like me up in here. Y'all don't like me up in here. If you don't get delivered from your attitude, your anger, your procrastination, your perversion, you will hold the people down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot hide behind the pulpit. Hallelujah. Oh, I may be gifted to preach the word, but I'm not gifted to live it. I gotta come just like everybody else. I gotta pick up my cross daily and deny myself just like everybody else. Hallelujah. 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 This life is not easy. And people are looking to us. You say, well, people are looking to me for a word. They're not only looking to you for a word. They're looking to you to confirm that this word is true. That God is good. That truly good in verse, goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. That we live in favor. That God will bless those who are faithful to him. My God, that when you get in trouble, God will get God in trouble with you. You have weaknesses in your 
gospel I preach? How can I preach it with conviction? How can I tell you when your back is up against the wall and you feel like a failure and you failed yourself going to God that the word is still true that you're still a child of the living God you still have favor with God making sure his leaders need help. You can't run from it. Glory to God. It's time to live this thing. It's time for some folks preaching that got some real deliverance. Not some folks who've never done anything. Came out the womb saved. Been saved their whole life. That's not my testimony. Listen, God saved me from some stuff, plenty of it. Yeah. Much of it I did in these streets right here in this city. He saved me from some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen. And when he saved me, he wasn't true. And when he called me to preach, he wasn't true. Since I've been preaching the gospel, I've run up against some things in me that I hated. Yeah. Yeah. See, folks don't talk like this. Yeah. I'm a good kid. I don't care. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because folks wonder, how do you get to a certain level in ministry? And I, you know, I, I, I you know people who know my ministry know what I'm talking about. How do you get to certain levels in ministry? How do you get there? Amen. You have got to allow God's grace to come in and overwhelm your weaknesses. No, 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 listen. But, but, but because we're already supposed to be perfect, all right, I'm almost finished. I'm going to sit on there. But because we're already supposed to be perfect as preachers, okay, if something comes up in our lives, we feel like we got to hide it. Come on, man. Right, come on. We got to act like it's not so. Come on, come on. That's not God. I say that's not God. Stuff's going to come up. Listen, how you deal with it is the key to your vision. Yes. Yes. No, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The key to your ministry is not how good you preach. That, that's not because because your preaching won't have any power. If when you don't run up against something about you that is absolutely despicable. You don't get to go to God and let him, by his grace, yes. deliver you yes. and give you authority over it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Sir. Amen. Where you can walk in true faith. Yes. Sir. I'm talking true faith, confidence yes. in God. Yes. Yes. Because God has come through for you. Yes. Yes. Listen, I didn't know how to be a father. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the only thing I knew about being a father was stuff you don't want to deal with. You don't want to see that? You don't want to see me manifest my father. That is ugly. I promised myself I was not going to do to my kids what my father did to me. I promised myself. Look out. Look out. And I was good until I had kids. It broke my heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I knew the pain that I went through. Yes, sir. I knew how worthless I felt. I said, God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. I cried out to the Lord. 
He delivered me. Amen. I got something to preach to fathers. I got something to preach to families. I got something to preach. Because I didn't run. You need to hear me, men of God. I didn't run from my problems. The vision God gave me of myself as a father was being a blessed father. That wasn't what I was manifesting. All right. I didn't get discouraged right. and run from it. I said, God, I know what you showed me is true. Uh, all right. Yes, sir. You're going to have to deliver me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. And he did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's just one area. Area after area after area comes up as you pass it. Your shortcomings. Yes. Who of us is totally equipped for this thing? No. Paul found himself coming up short. He prayed three times. God, you want to remove this thing. What did he say? How am I going to preach that? When if I come up short, I don't rely on his grace. I'm hiding my stuff and acting like I'm all right. Making a deal with my wife, I'll buy you a purse and a dress if you just act like right the same. Just smile, baby. We're going to work it out later. Just smile. It's not, listen, 
that the things that the enemy is coming against me with is not personal. He's trying to hold back a whole city. And he's bringing the whole city arsenal. I'm like, oh my goodness. Mom, that first? Hallelujah. I'm looking for some men and women of God who believe more in the power of God than they do the power of the devil. I'm talking about in the personal life. I'm talking about you being able to get private victory. Hallelujah. And not just public success. I'm talking about having something free. I'm talking about an anointing that can break yokes because it broke the yokes in your life. Hallelujah. I'm talking about real ministry. Hallelujah. How have I been able to do it for 23 years? That's all I know. All I know is seeking God and getting deliverance and breaking through and, and letting him show me what it is that you do in certain situations and then preaching that and, 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 and walking that out before the people and them experiencing the same results. That's all I know. Yes. And it's working out all right. can't even find my toolbox. I ain't trying to fix that. <laughs> it ain't broke. It ain't broke. Man and woman of God. Praise God. 20 years. I congratulate you. I also challenge you. Praise God. I also challenge you to face the things that you deal with knowing that God is going to bring you through and manifest his victory in your life. Yes, sir. So that you can bring the yes, sir. through to another life. Yes, sir. It's time to go to another place in God. I said it's time to go to another place in God. Hallelujah. It's time to go to another place in Him. Glory to God. Listen, it's not about form and fashion. I mean, I could have said a little something. And then at the end, tuned it up to put a little hot sauce on it. <laughs> and we could have skipped on out of here <laughs> and been in the same place this time next year. That's not what I'm about, people. I'm in flat. You got to keep it real in flat. You get what I'm saying? You got folks struggling. You got to keep it real. You got to keep it real advancing too. Praise God. Praise God. Point your hands toward these people here. Father, we thank you for this man and woman of God whom you've chosen, God, in this place, in this ministry. I pray, God, praise God, for the anointing to destroy yokes that works in their lives. I thank you for a spirit of peace prosperity, progress, strength, that it would manifest God in a way where it's undeniable. Hallelujah. I pray for the victory of the Lord to come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said there's an anointing on your prayers. The Lord said in this season of your life, my daughter, there's an anointing on your prayers. God said I'm going to put something or somebody on your heart. Even in the late night hour, God said, you cry out for them and I will deliver, says the Spirit of the Lord. There's a anointing on your prayers. Oh, bless God. The Lord said, you've been in a place for a season. God said, it's time to go to a new place. Hallelujah. He said, there's a new place for you. There's a new place, says the Spirit of the Lord. And God said, I will bring you into this place. And the way you know that you're there, says the Spirit of the Lord, is that you will you will get caught up in it and you'll look around and notice that things are different. God, I see different people. I see different people. I see different situations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I see you making a difference in a different way, says the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a hand in this place. Hallelujah.